is. Um, and she, like, she plays both Rise and Cast, and in this game, since they have first pick, they may just want to leave both options up because they're both really strong champions, and the other team this time will probably ban Kassin because it looks like they don't really have a good counter even though they thought they did last game. I don't think the problem last game so much was the Kassin, it was the Scion versus Aurelia lane. I, if, I, if I'm going to guess, I wouldn't actually expect them to ban Kassin, but more just have a better answer for the Aurelia lane. Because if they wouldn't have had to do the lane swap, they could have kept Kassin down with Uter, but Uter had to go top because Aurelia was crushing so hard. I mean, yeah, I agree. I agree with that. Um, Shago could have, I don't know, help, could, could have really helped top more. Right. But at this point, um, I mean, look, so uh, France decides to ban Rise this game. Um, and I, Oswin does not jungle ramp. It's just something that's, like, not in his pull of heroes. It's really popular among, like, every other jungler, but he just does not jungle ramp. It's, right. And they ban Karthus, which is interesting. I don't know if the other team has a Karthus player, but Karthus... Oh, they do have a Karthus they player. They have, yeah. have a Karthus player, as Demon just says. Uh, so Karthus is really strong in like any team comp. Like he's just a, an ultimate like he's a, he's a carry that's very similar to Rise in the sense that he could fit in almost every single team comp. Yeah, it's one of the reasons that it's just another Fizz ban because they nobody on Canada plays Fizz. Yeah, not many people in the U.S. play Fizz either. It's just like Wes Rice and uh, Boy Boy play Fizz, and that's it. And he's very, like, a specific... Like, he's really good in certain instances, but, like, no one in Canada plays Fizz. Like, Hotshot doesn't play any kill champion stop. There are very few counters to Rise and Karthus. Rise and Karthus are some of the APs that you can actually pick quite early and not get counter lane, which is the reasons they get banned so often, I think. Oh, K Canada has first picked this game, and they decide to ban out Kassin, which is... That's uh, confusing. It's interesting, days. because I imagine they wanted to just leave it up just to France with ban it, because... I, well, I don't know, actually. It, it, they might be just be looking to go for a Graves. I think that's what they're going to do. They're going to look to go for a Graves early and just destroy the bottom lane which, by shoving really hard. Right. And they're going to... Okay, so they ban Graves. Another ban on Graves. He's been, it's actually really interesting. When everyone saw the patch notes and was like, oh, 525 range Graves, oh, he's done. And then people were like, wait a minute. He still has ridiculous ratios and crazy high base values. I don't really agree with a Caitlyn first pick. I don't think she's strong enough to warrant a first pick. Um, especially with every other AD carry on the map. It's just like, you can you can definitely farm out that lane with like Ezreal plus like Sona. So like, if anything, they should have been picking up like a support, a very niche support champion like Sona that they wanted here. I actually like the... If they did their homework, that's a really smart pick because Kuja really, really likes to play Janna. And if Caitlyn is just super good against Janna because of how much he can poke and, and range, you have to play sustain of some kind against Caitlyn, which would force Kuja off of his favorite support just by picking Caitlyn. Um, I don't know if you need too much sustain because like we've done lanes against Caitlyn where we don't have sustain before, and it's worked out. It just depends on how like what kind of AD carry they get because they can't give you like Vayne because Vayne's such short right, range that right. you just get like rolled by Kaylee in every single matchup but they give him like a thousand range Ezreal okay so they go for an Uthier pick again which is which worked last game but they really need to combo that with something better um, I'm not quite sure what they're thinking about doing and they go for Sona this game which is right. interesting I like the more offensive aggressive Sona pick and like Sona pick. let them control bottom lane to get like a really uh, well no, the, they, you're not going to control bottom lane against Kaylee though Okay, so... Hot -G -G. Yeah, hot check gets Italy this game, which is... Oh, they're going for a straight-up poke They're going comp. for a straight-up poke comp. So you can expect to see maybe a Cassiopeia as one of their last picks and something maybe to pull I, them into the team. I don't think GG likes Cassiopeia because I think he has the same problem I do with her in that, like, no one knows how to play her outside of lane. That's why, like, all the U.S. teams dropped her. It's very... I don't know why. Like, she's so strong, but she's very hard to play outside of lane. So they're just, I think they're just going to go for a TF pick here, which would be... Like they they did this exact comp against um, China, yeah. They did, and China had almost no answer for it. Um, and so they also have a trundle, which means like you can't dive into this comp. So they'll just have like free pokes all day. And if you don't beat them in the laney phase, um, it's gonna be really, really, really hard. So you to expect deal with. Uh, like a TF and a Blitz maybe from Elements? Um, that like that would work really well. Or Elements can play Janna here and uh, just blow away any kind of initiation. Oh wow, okay. So France chooses a really hard like initiation comp with like long range initiation with Rumble. I really like Rumble and Kennedy comps now because they're one of the only APs that can initiate like from like really, really well. And 
Rumble also does really well against Nidalee, so even if you send him top, like he, it looks like they might just jungle. They jungle Udyr, which is which is good. Like I like jungle Udyr, um, and they put uh, no, Rumble France, top. France still hasn't. They could still pick a jungle with their last pick. Right, right. I agree. They, they still could, and they can send like uh, Rumble mid or Udyr mid even. I feel like that's what they're gonna do. Oh, in this game, Hotshot does indeed choose uh, uh, Nidalee. Um, Okay, so yeah, they're doing a, a poke comp with a healer. This is a huge poke comp, yeah. Yeah, and all they're going to do is try the poke. And this, like, this will work super, super well if they can get to late game. Uh, and if they, but if they can't, if they get killed in lanes, it's going to be really hard because they need at least two of the carries to be farmed enough to be able to poke well. Um, and they, they obviously brought a healer to, to be able to out-sustain any kind of poke the other team could throw, like Urgot poke. And I know France really likes Urgot, which is, like, it's not something that's run very commonly in the U.S. So, like, he did well last game. Like, he actually did pretty well last game. It's just that, like, the rest of his team couldn't, like, support the kind of play that he has. And so, I'm, I don't know what they're going to pick here. I really want to look forward to, like, a strong AP mid. Maybe Morgana, but I think her initiation is not good enough. I still feel like they're going to pick their jungle here. I wouldn't be too surprised to see a Mumu because they want a way to initiate hard. The, the thing is, like, like Ken is already running full cleanse. So you can't really initiate on top of full cleanse with Trundle unless you just want to get crud. So, so they decide Anivia. to pick an AP here. And I don't know if exactly if, if Anivia can even initiate on top of Rumble. Like, it takes a lot of setup for Anivia to do damage. Um, it really but does. It's... Intr like, I would have gone for something more like Cassiopeia if they could have played it. Um, maybe even more like Annie, like set up like a complete blowout comp and just crush the the TF mid. And okay, so TF mid is not going to be taking any defensive summoners, which... And Yellow Star is playing Anivia? That's... Anything... I, I'm not familiar with yeah, Yellow Star's familiar. Anivia. Well, Yellow Star is normally the AD carry for Millennium and is the AD carry for AAA. So oh. uh, we saw Titus obviously playing Urgot last game as well. Titus, Titus is the Urgot yeah. player. So it's obviously a case of we want Urgot, so what do you want to play, Yellow Star? Right. So it's was not, Yellow, Star, Yellow Star was the Scion last game as well? He was the Scion last and game as well. And he's normally AD carry, which might explain why he did so poorly in lane. Yeah. yeah. But... Uh, I mean, Anivia can be very good. We've seen some. Uh, in fact, Anivia in uh, his current team at AAA, Althor is outstanding with Anivia. Right. Um, which actually you'll get to see because they're going to. Uh, so I'm, I'm giving the game away here. They're going to AEM Kiev, obviously. Right. Um, so it will be interesting to see how this one works out. But like you mentioned, that is that is really a poke team. But we get to see Hotshot GG on Nidalee in his last, potentially last Hotshot game. Hotshot Nidalee. Hotshot Nidalee GG, indeed. So there is the teams on the stage getting ready to go. We know for a fact that cr the, uh, the graphic is going to crash, so I'm just filling time while uh, we get ready to complete court. So actually, these things in the background, you can see these mem mem memories. These are awesome. It's basically showing videos of previous finals like StarCraft, WarCraft 3, etc., previous matches. It's all uh, the fully commentated version. It's, it's pretty awesome to watch. Unfortunately, the quality is not that great because going back to 2003, Video was a little Stream bit different. Stream quality was a little different then. Yeah, and there's your team members sir, at the front oh, there. there. There's Locust. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, at the front, there's a couple of right games down the end there. So uh, we are going to get into the game. We're just waiting for the crap. <laughs> I don't even think they wait for the Koreans to stop talking that time. I was, I was hoping to wait for it. On, uh, Hotshot GG in the Witch. Uh, I think, is, that, is that the new Halloween outfit, the Witch one? I'm not too sure what it's got on there. But anyway, we're going to have... Let's give you a play rundown while we uh, set up to see whether we do get any level 1 fights. No uh, pauses or dropping this time from uh, the odd one. So Welcome for Canada, it's going to be... I'm not expecting much to happen at level 1. There is no... Uh, no teams have any good way of initiating other than... Other than TF, really, and you're not going to lead with TF into a yeah. team with Anivia. So I have a feeling both teams are just going to defend and sit back. But France is taking risk because they feel desperate after the first game, I guess. Well, and like we mentioned, they're a pretty bunch of poke teams, so they're actually pretty low hit points to start with. So there are really no, no bruises in there whatsoever to uh, get in your face at level one. So they're going to invade and maybe try and prevent them. Seconds until minion spawn. Now we're seeing Hotshot actually down the bottom lane at the moment. And... 
I guess he's going to just teleport top and wait to see whether they can get a gank or something. I'm not too sure if Zeeb can see. Um, he may just be putting traps more down. traps in the bush. Yeah. Just to help with push control of the game. And then he's going to TP back in about 20 seconds and run to his lane. Yeah, so let's see whether Elements gets caught out. The ping's gone down onto the, onto the uh, golems, which is what France has sat ready and waiting for. Minions have spawned. Or they're planning on doing a 1v2 with Hotshot bottom, but I haven't seen... No, it looks like they're just laying six traps in the bush yeah. to troll. Slash, get complete control of that bush. Now that I heard that shot this going off from Chaos. Could be so here go France, oh. they are going to get the stun down, which is only going to go on towards the Golems and not the heroes. So Kex easily backed away from that on Elements as well. They will take the Golems, so it's just going to take the experience away from uh, Chaos there. Obviously, it takes you pretty much to level two if you do get them on your AD carry. So they're going to back away, and Hotshot GG has, like you say, ported back and goes back top. Rumble now also joining late. So it is going to be Hotshot GG on Nidley up the top there against uh, Soaz on Rumble in the mid lane. It will be Big Fat LP on Twisted Fate versus Yellowstar on Anivia. In the jungle, it is going to be Linak on Udia versus. <laughs> The odd one on Trundle, although they're not really versus each other in the jungle. And uh, down the bottom, of course, it's going to be Elements and Chaos on Tristana. Uh, so Ke Caitlyn, sorry, uh, and uh, Soraka versus Ergot again, and Kuja this time on on uh, Sona. Which, for me, Sona's always been the best support for a long time lately. But that's the opinion of pretty much most teams actually yeah. they generally pick someone a first advantage well when they oh, got a good stun elements on towards elements then unfortunately not going to have the damage they tried to switch towards chaos there but like you mentioned they did just blow the flashes out there so uh that's a good start you've got to be happy with that Make, blowing them some of the spells which means obviously you'd expect the jungler to go back but i would expect a visit from linak in a moment the camera needs to get back down there because they have managed to go on towards elements there the lock on comes on don't really have enough he damage to finish him off he can't dive oh, in yet and wow the crit as well and Kuja taken down very low by the minions in amongst all that, which may even force him backwards. Did I just see it? It was a heal, yeah, yeah. Linek is committing uh, experienced suicide here. Trundle's taking his entire top jungle. They did the invade at the start of the game, so he's already slightly slower oh, than the other junglers. Kuja. Oh my goodness. It's the six traps in the bush, basically, no. that he walked into there. But he... He, he did like the walk forward attack basic attack damage. I wonder whether he disconnected or not. That's, I get paranoid when I see these things nowadays after having so many disconnects. Still but bottom. Yeah, he's losing out massively on the experience, and Kerox is really going to start running ragged down this bottom lane. Now, look at that. Even Sorak is just forcing him <laughs> off the river. That's just pure, pure comedy while Kerox is just going to quite happily farm down bottom. Fear them bananas. Meanwhile, at the top, you can see Rumble's been pushed pretty heavily by Nidalee at the top there. And he's going to have a, a little tough time of it to start with. And, and clearly those traps, I think, for Hotshot, did, would it be the traps, do you think, that made the difference? That obviously gives the, the bonus of damage, etc. Uh, sorry, I missed that. So, oh, the, the damage on the, down the bottom lane. Obviously, there's traps that nearly uh, had laid all that down there. Do you think that really basically helped with the kill? Absolutely, because uh, I think the, the nearly trap had Shred on it, plus the Caitlyn trap. Yeah. I actually think it did. He walked backwards into oh. that bush. And I was going to mention before the game, but other things happened. I expect Hotshot to lose this lane because Rumble is actually a very good counter pick to a Nidalee lane. Nidalee pretty much always loses early to Rumble. She can't... Rumble's front load of damage is too much, and before Nidalee can jump away, she's very vulnerable. One thing I'm disappointed is we haven't seen Soaz on uh, Aurelia this, this tournament. Uh, Wicked gets all the praise for being on Aurelia, but personally I think Soaz is actually one of the top Aurelias. Certainly in the game, he's just fantastic on it. Every time I've saw him, and certainly when he played Millennium, he, he used to use it a lot, but I, I've not seen him play it for a long time. I mean, you guys obviously have Voiboy at the top. He pretty much lives on Renekton, or that's what he's famous for, but uh, uh, do you ever use an Aurelia? I, I don't think I've ever seen Digging we, Tasks We've used it occasionally, but there's you see very little uh, Aurelia play just in general in North America. It's a little odd one, but okay. So Hotshot's uh, return to lane, and it is all square 1-1. One, one. So really, Hotshot dying is probably a bit more worthwhile than uh, just a single Sona kill, because Sona, while I hate to say it doesn't mean a lot that your support dies, it, it does, but, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it's a lot more important to get that AD carry. Linux is going to have to back away from that on. I feel Linux is going to fall behind here because he's been going for the ganks and they've not been paying off. You can see the odd one on level 5 now, Linux is still only on level 3. The thing about the bottom lane gank that made it so uh, bad for France is Uder spends so much time bottom trying to create and make something happen. 
and his team is actually the one that died. So, even though he spent so much time ganking, Trundle spent that entire time farming. And generally, Uder is much faster in the jungle than Trundle, but Trundle is substantially ahead of him right now, which is very bad news for Uder. And he bought... The one thing about Uder, at least in my opinion, is you need to get ahead early, because Trundle's actually invading early, and Uder even bought a pink ward, so he's going to be behind on his items as well. So we do finally go across to it. I'm sure he realizes something's up. <laughs> yeah, he saw him enter. Oh, and actually, we're going to have... Pick for LP getting caught out by Nibby there. He's going to easily walk around the wall there. And you can see the odd one putting a good half of the damage down on towards Linux there. Linux, I think, just on the right. So he's waiting for them to come up. I didn't actually get to see the fight. Meanwhile, down the bottom, I can also see that Ergot's been completely forced out of lane. He's down half health as well. Hopefully, the camera will pick it up. You can see he's having to desperately fight off Kayax, who's been completely untouched. You can see they're actually behind the turret, I think, at the moment, down the bottom there. Finally, I think the camera's going to go down there as uh, the whole fight's finished. <laughs> Thanks, camera guy. Um, I don't know what to make of this whole not controlling the camera thing. I've kind of been used to it throughout, but I know a lot of people out on the internet would much prefer a third cameraman. It, I guess it would work. It, it works well if there's a pro player doing it, but... Who can know? Yeah, who can I mean, I don't, I don't know well. who the actual player is controlling it. Certainly the streams that people would have been watching during this event. Oh, Hotshot GG is going to go down. Pops the ulti down. The Ignite goes down. He just needs to finish him off. And Soaz gets a second kill. And that is a completely unaided kill as well. And that's going to give him his Hextech uh, Revolver straight away. Meanwhile, down the bottom, I think uh, Urgot has gone back. And the Koreans must be going mental because they love Hotshot GG. That is a very bad matchup. For... And it's eight minutes in, and Uder is still level four. Even though Rumble is so far ahead early, this Uder being behind, especially against a Pokomp, he has no place in this game. He will not be able to get into fights without dying before he hits anything. And we've seen we've seen Big Fight LP playing uh, Twisty Fight actually quite a lot this tournament. Yeah, um, it's one of his. Uh, it's one of his old characters. Yeah, I remember it from Yonks ago. It was, in fact, well, I say I remember it. It was kind of after the WCG 2010 when uh, Germany played so well with SK Gaming that it was then. Um, played so well in the mid with Twisted Fate, and suddenly while everyone went, America went, oh, we could use Twisted Fate. He really works well. And he was banned straight away, and America went on to win that one. Scar, obviously, you play the mid uh, most. I mean, I guess you've come up against Big Fat LP a lot. Do you fear his Twisted Fate so much? The thing is, I haven't played against him recently. Like, he needs to play, like, God, like, so much TF. Like, just a ton of TF. And, like, the thing is, recently, I, I think you can really... The reason why people don't pick TF much is because his laning phase is very uh, risky. Like, if you run a kill champ mid, like, Candy or, like, Zareth or something, you can one-shot TF at 6 and just, like, s snowball off him because he's just so weak. He's very slow. He doesn't have much mobility. It's it's just really bad matchups in general. This is a matchup that he can actually kind of farm against because in early levels, Nivea can't really pressure much. And at 6, he's not, she's not guaranteed any sort of kill. So I really thought that, like, France could have abused that with, like, a good Zareth pick. Uh, oh, it's not that twisted force also supporting him by the looks of it. He is so as he's surely going to go down here. Will get picked up. He is going to come in. I don't think he's going to be able to do a great deal about it. In fact, he's going to get kited. He's going to get stun card and the old one will finish him off surely. Rabbit Bly will go on to him. And yeah, Hotshot GG gets on as a double kill. And that is exactly why Twisted Fate can work because just pulled it top straight away and gets the kill. And that was actually a setup game. No, yeah, that starts crazily suicidal. Gone in the top there. What on earth? Jat slaps his forehead at that one. <laughs> it's just like, what are you doing? They had such a great start, that top lane. And, and that even may be the tower. In fact, it will be the tower, I think. That's just that's just backfired horribly for them. I don't understand why they would just throw themselves in one by one there. Uh, it's very, very weird for me as well. Like, Also, this Rumble build I, I'm looking at, I'm like, he's rushing Gunblade. And I'm like, that's... Uh, very strange. Usually you just see the, the standard will into Ravnon is willing to Rylize, but he just decides to go straight Gunplay and uh, maybe it might work against Italy. And you see a, a Dragon Force by France. Uh, I think they, they can do this easily. No one's nearby. So they can, yeah, they can just clear it out, which means they'll, they'll be at least caught up to an extent. They're still behind almost 2,000, like 2,000 plus gold, which is a lot. Um, it really depends on how much Rumble can feed off Italy at this point, and how 
much as they can keep TF down, because TF can just roam at this point. And it's... Because he did his first ult with blue buff, so Destiny's up in 20, 20 almost 20 seconds right here. Yeah, and Yellow Star coming in the middle there at the moment. Yellow Star, he's, he's been quite happily farming though. I mean, he is, he is slightly ahead on farm. Obviously, we always talk about the fact that he does need blue or catalyst there. Hotshot GG's actually been caught out by Linnet there. Yellow Star is going to come around. He's going to have to hop in towards the bus. Rumble's making his way down south, but the rest of his teammates are coming around. He's going to take a tower hit. That's going to be Destiny coming in, just like you said. And now right. Linnet's going to have to back away from that one, really. But that is an ulti used to save Hotshot. So that's kind of worked that's out well for France there. If there's ever a point in this game where they can get blue buff on Nidalee and Twisted Fate, they're going to take two or three towers because that amount of poke and spam is not something France is going to be able to deal with. Yeah, and they do, and they can just kite them round. Rumble now looking to come around the back side of uh, Big Fat LP. You can finally see him here twitching away in the bush. And the only reason you would ever go Gunblade on Rumble, if there is a reason, is if you want to get in and kind of brawl and be a bruiser. But with how much kite and poke Canada has, there's no reason not to go a full AP build. It's very confusing. Oh, I'm glad it's not just the commentators that get confused when we see these builds. Yeah. We often get called out for it as well. It's going, what do you mean he's building that? That's so silly. It's like, we know. <laughs> we're, right. we're watching it. And we're still thinking, what the hell are you doing? And this is, uh, even with the Dragon, this is a very large early gold advantage for Canada. They're... I think a lot of it has to do with the jungler gold. If you look uh, 56 and two kills versus 39 and 01, that might be where uh, at least a thousand of the discrepancy is coming in. But I'm not quite sure how they're up so much gold because the CS looks somewhat close. The two, oh, the two towers, okay, there it is. Yeah, so the two towers would be the, uh, at least I could see in the difference. Um, like you mentioned, the farm is actually pretty close and if you're going to be leading against TF in the mid there that's kind of inevitable once he hits 6 he can farm quite easily down the bottom you can see the CS pretty much even between them 100 to 91 and uh, no BF swords or anything like that triple right, Doran's actually could, uh, from Chaos. I guess he did I guess he didn't want to risk Urgot getting that stone if he could have somehow given that to Twisted Fate they'd have to they needed to take down the mid towers no problem <laughs> so I'm going to continue pushing mid they know that the dragon's not there so there's kind of like two at the moment milling around KX is like, what am I going to do? When am I going here? Uder is getting out. completely bullied around the jungle by the odd one right now. Well, we talked about that. That's all, all down to that start, isn't it? Where he's just... It just snowballs from there, right? Yeah. Once, once a jungler, especially a good jungler like the odd one, gets that advantage on another jungle, they can punish so hard, especially, especially with Twisted Fate. That's one of the underrated things about Twisted Fate is the pressure he puts on the jungler because... The gold advantage, etc. This big experience. A, it's the gold advantage, and B, it's if you catch him while counter jungling, the other jungler pretty much always has to run away because Twisted Fate can always be there to support. And there's no towers to retreat to in the jungle. So if you get caught low at all in the jungle against a Twisted Fate, you're going to die. Yeah. Which is where the counter warding will help, which is you can see exactly what CLG is starting to do. Starting to ward up that jungle. And the blue heavily warded. Around. They're even just taking the fighting over the, the one single lizard. <laughs> like, no, it's mine! It's gold. mine! <laughs> Do not take it. Of course, we'll, we should mention we are on the Fizz patch here. It is not the latest patch that you will be playing at home. Uh, so the uh, the banking system, etc., is not in place at the moment in the jungle, which I believe has been patched in now, I believe, I think it has. in live. I, think it has. I was playing it last night, and I was trying to think, is this the bank? It is in place. It is. It's <laughs> very hard to notice because the banking system doesn't kick in until the camp's been up for at least two minutes. Yeah. So, uh, as mentioned, yes, they will farm up. And the moment we're going through a bit of a passive farming stage, we can see, obviously, Kaox is uh, really... I'd, I'd love to see the gold. This is one of the things I like to toggle between, see what gold, see how close he is to that BF sword. He's going to try and catch on towards uh, Titus there. Ergot's just going to back away from that one. We'll take a bit of damage. Meanwhile, at the top, you can see that uh, Linak is trying to position himself for a gank on towards Nidalee. Meanwhile, actually, Nidalee coming down the backside of Yellowstar, and Big Fat LB just baiting him out here. We'll try and come back with that stun card. Nidalee now will pounce out, does get the stun card. It's on the tower there, unfortunately. Surely going to pop Rebirth. Will they manage to finish him off? No! I do not believe it. He's going to be on absolutely nothing there. Linak comes out to save his bacon, and he is just going to port straight back. Why is he so? May well have to give up the middle tower here, though, because uh, Hotshot GG Big Fat LP will poke it back. So as catching out towards Elements there. Elements oh. does get caught out with a beautiful ulti there. And very well played by Soaz. And that's going to even things up to 4-3 in kills. 
funny thing is, if he didn't have Gunblade, he probably wouldn't have gotten that kill. <laughs> yeah, very true, as you can see the timer now cooled down on it. So, uh, making good use of that Gunblade. I'm glad it's not just us that make <laughs> gets, gets found out like that sometimes. Like, you know, normally we could just say, hey, these guys are pro players, we can't question it, but you know. <laughs> uh, I suppose. I, I've seen uh, Gunblade Rumble as a mess around troll build when you're just trying to 1v1 people all day. And uh, maybe that's his plan. <laughs> But uh, Hotshot GG doing his usual thing and continuing farm up the top. Meanwhile, mid turret is going to go down, so that will be the first turret for France, you would expect. But Hotshot GG is going to put pressure on that mid turret. Will France continue on? Dragon must be due around about now, I think. I'm trying to think of the time. Oh, we didn't actually keep a note of the time. It's normally great when you guys play as you just type it in the chat. It's right. awesome. We can spot it. Like, oh, I was like, oh, I remember when the dragon's up. Yeah. Of course, I yeah. give perfect attention to this game. <laughs> I know exactly when it's coming up. And here we go, Linux gonna try and catch out. He does flash actually catch on towards oh, no. Chaos there. Oh, and the crescendo completely missing. And that was flashed out of. And Yellowstar just trying to wall off and really getting nothing from that. Uh, so Yellowstar blowing a lot. Meanwhile, Hotso Chichi is actually nearly taken down this top inner turret. They've completely ignored him up the top there. Now Soez is going back, but it's all too late. The damage is done. That health will not regenerate in the tower. And he's just gonna back away and say, thanks, I've, I've just took three quarters of your tower down for free. I was actually surprised that they weren't able to get any picks there. Chaos did a really good job of flashing away at exactly the right time. Because Trundle's pillar was actually on recharge when they went in for that charge. And the problem is, the more levels Trundle gets, I think once he's 16, his pillar's on an extremely low cooldown. I think it goes down to 11 seconds. So once he's got 5 points in pillar, I don't see how France is going to be able to push him into a force fight, to force fight. Unless they land, uh, like, bisecting and nibby walls that have to be over. The only way they can initiate. And uh, those Anivia walls are always one of the key points of Anivia. Is they can be like so hit and miss with the walls. You can see some great play, completely wall off someone, separate them, get the kill, or you can wall off your entire team. Scarry, do you play Anivia much at all? I mean, I, I only ever see you on Cat and I, Talon. And I actually like have played Anivia quite a bit, but it's not something that it's not something that I consider like one of my my main champions I go to. Like what I mean about France's like lack of like objective control was that middle fight after they pushed four people out and half of them were low, they really could have just forced the dragon off that and now now it's a risk doing it. And they may have just lost the game. But this is a bad this is gonna be a bad team fight for them. It is just lost the game and Linux is gonna get caught out actually the wall blocking him off there. Not quite the full wall though so Kuja may well get caught out by Hot Shot GG here I think Hot Shot not quite got his uh, Ravnos death cap, but wow, one pounce doing a lot of damage there. And the odd one comes out, but that is going to be the Dragon going to uh, Canada there, and France can't do anything about it, so they initiate on it. They Luckily, though, they only lost Linak in that fight. I was going to say, they, I'm pretty sure the one down the bottom was going to get caught out. It was Linak, the camera didn't follow him, but uh, he did go down. But the initiation, again, and this is just like you mentioned, yeah, look at that. Just caught out with that spear, and Yellow Star using nearly half his hit points. And he's going to continue on poking away. All he needs now is Twisted Fate to come around and start wildcarding through that hedge as well. And they're going to be in all sorts of trouble. They are. And I really just like this Rumble build as well because usually if you're going to go Will or if you're going to go like a slow, you go Rylize or Gunblade. But deciding to go both is usually a complete waste of like money because you're getting the slow portion from another item as well. And so he really should have just gone Rabadons. It looks like they're... Yeah, they're trying to steal blue right now, and they should be able to... I don't think they're going to force. <laughs> this is the poke coming right in here. They're going to try and force it around. Linak is going to get in there. Clem, uh, sorry, Clems was used, but a big fail. He might get taken out. They're going to throw everything at him. Meanwhile, Nidley is still around here. He's trying to desperately... Now he's thinking, what am I going to do? I've got five members coming out, but he's just going to bait them towards him. He's realized he's got Yellowstar just below him. Meanwhile, you can see Canada have taken that mid turret while they deal with Hotshot here. Hotshot's just going to try and pounce through. Gets stunned up, does pounce through. Linux was ready and waiting, does get the stun up. Hotshot GG will go down here eventually. And that was uh, basically COG trying to get too greedy. They realized, like I said earlier, if they could get two blue buffs, that would basically give them a full rain over towers. And they wanted it so badly that they put themselves in a bad situation. One other thing I wanted to mention tower. is even though TF and Nidalee are both super reliant on blue, they decided, it seems, amongst themselves who was actually going to get them. You see Hotshot built a Rod of Ages, so his mana pool is actually quite large, whereas uh, 
Big Fat LP didn't. He built a death cap. So whenever there's a blue on CLG, they're going to be giving it to GG. That's why Hotshot built the ROA, because he's not expecting to get blues. Yeah, so this is my blue. We're going to fight for it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so the old one clearing out that He knows he can't get his own blue, so he's like, we got to do this right now. <laughs> yeah. And I think he... Bad call. <laughs> Bad call. And we... Whoa! And then it's an important thing to note. In the game, there's been a lot of chat lately. Um, I don't know how much you guys want to talk about this situation, but obviously with CLG... Um, with elements changing around and the fact that even elements has been posted saying you know there's three people making calls in this team there's Chowster, St. Vicious and Hotshot GG and they're constantly arguing throughout the game I mean you guys uh, is you that make the call isn't it in the, when it comes to the actual fight so you try to yeah. <laughs> I mean, Sometimes they're the wrong calls. I mean, I assume you... Yeah, well, that's it. I mean, you can make the wrong calls, and yes, right. you have to take take it for it. But, but surely having three people making the calls and making the wrong one... Oh, they're going to go on to a hot shot. GG's going to get shortly off. caught out there. That was a complete catch-out. Wow, did they really need crescendo there? I'm not too sure about that. that Definitely seems, not. That seemed that a little, little bit of a waste there, but, you know... They would be able to force Baron a lot better if they would not have used Crescendo, though. That was really poor. This is, this is very good for them, though. They're going to be able to get a, probably a tower out of this. Yeah, they that Rumble them. is is carrying pretty hard. Meanwhile, the Udyr also against the, against the odd one up top there. I'm not too sure Udyr is going to come out on top of this one. We can see him backing out. Hopefully, the camera will pan towards it in a minute. They're, they're just concentrating on big for LP. Yeah, they have backed away. So, Udyr wisely choosing to get away from that one. That will be that mid turret. And that's all come from being caught which is exactly what we saw Canada doing with Poland. Poland were completely catching them out. You can see the odd one coming around there. Linux like, hi, I'm in the jungle. So as he's going to try and come around, can he catch the slow? The lock-on from Titus as well. The damage is going to come across. Not quite going to be enough. Good stun card as well. And the Pillar of Filth being used very wisely by the odd one. He's going to back out of that one. 7-5 at the moment. The kills in favor of France. And Yellowstone needs to be careful. He doesn't get caught out of that. And if you're one of the slowest champions in the game, hot shot on Nidley. is going to be one of the quickest and nearly... Nearly getting completely caught out there, pounce him, trying to get that kill. Oh. There's that wall. That's the difference I can say. Sometimes you can land it and it's perfect. Other times it won't quite work. But of course, you know, Nidley can just pounce over it, surely. I wish they would click on Anivia's skill build because it didn't look like he's put many points in the wall so far. Which is actually somewhat surprising to me since it's their really only way of initiating. I think he put more points in the wall early to force fights, but he hasn't done that. So really it's down to whether uh, Rumble who is 6 one zero at the moment. Really, the fact uh, only other one kill has gone to Linak at the moment, so it is all on Soaz for Team France. Meanwhile, Canada are chasing kills. But, like we mentioned, if it starts getting later and later in the game, the Pope team generally comes out on top. They can start picking those turrets down. You can see the Infinity Edge now Absolutely. on. Here's, they, they have the blue buff on, on Twisted Fate here, and they're finally going to try to set up drop outside this tower. We'll see how it works. It's, and Nivy was a really good pick against Pokovs because it's extremely hard to push against Nivia. So I want to see what happens here. So you can obviously, oh, see the spear coming through. It's inevitable he's going to start putting those spears through. Kuja needs to be careful of that. So does Yellowstar, just dodges out the side of it. But like you mentioned, with, certainly with Rumbler and Yellowstar uh, on the Nivia, they can just pop that ulti down and wipe the wave out straight away. So you can keep them at bay there. Linak actually coming around, getting catching on towards Hotshot GG. The rest of the team haven't gone for it because they're going down the bottom. I wish the camera would follow on to it because I can see the Rumble ulti going Rumble. across on towards the odd one. The odd one will go down. No, yes, he will. The Ignite will finish him off. Hotshot GG, meanwhile, at the top there, I can see the uh, spike coming in. Crescendo across and Elements has cleansed it off. Kaox cleansed it off as well. The wall goes across, but I think Kaox is going to get away from that one. Elements does go down. Kaox uh -huh. is caught out there. That's a really good fight from France there. They've come out on top of this one. Think they're going to push on towards the turret, or should they just turn it straight around and go for Baron right now? I'm not too sure. I think they're going to go straight for the turret here. Hotshot GG will come around, but you know, Big Fat LP and Nidley, they could probably bait them away from this one. I think the wiser choice is to go straight towards Baron here, and uh, I think that's what they're planning on doing, apart from stepping on a trap that kind of gives the game away. It's actually heavily warded by CLG. Now, uh, we've seen it before I with these two players. I think they they're going to go to Dragon instead, just because uh, Twisted Fate still has his blue buff, and Hotshot has enough mana to throw a couple spears. Yeah. They would not we, be we, able That's to what Baron I say. We've seen range. it before yeah. with, with, with uh, a Twisted Fate and certainly with Hotshot GG just baiting them away at Baron with them spears. And, it, you know, there's always that danger that he could get that one shot and get the steal. So wisely going to go for Dragon there. So 10-5, the gold still in favor of Canada, though, despite the fact they are that far ahead because of the early just game win that they had. They had a couple of Dragons early on. They're, they're certainly ahead on the CS across the board. And at the moment, though, they're chasing on towards Linak. He's going to get out of the way from this one, I think, quite easily. 
as well. There's been so much happening, but I just wanted to touch on what happened to that tower. Yep. It's a really good sign that France was able to initiate that fight because if they have a, like if they're actually able to catch Canada like that more often and initiate fights, Canada does not have a good team fight team. Nidalee and Twisted Fate are bad in straight up brawl fights. So if France can actually get in on them, they will win the game. Yeah, and of course there's quite a quite a few abilities blown in amongst all that. Let's see whether they're gonna be able to they're just going to wait around. I guess they will. You can see the bottom lane is pushed pretty heavily. I think Hotshot's going to go down there and clear that one out. Meanwhile, Twisted Fate at the top is porting back. So, that actual ping was from uh, France. It's 7 1 1 now on that uh, <laughs> that rumble oh, build. It's just rumble. it's just rubbing it in, isn't it? <laughs> Every step of the way. Gunblade Rylers now and uh, Sorcerer's Boots. And France coming down. They're going to pick up that blue, protect the blue. Where is Linak going? Let's keep our eye on him. Dragon is there. They are going to try and get those wards out, but Canada is sat ready and waiting for this one. They're going to have to pull it out. Something interesting here is everyone on CLG burn flashed the last fight, so if Anivia lands a good wall, they're going to get a lot of kills. Actually, it's they like do. Be the dragon. Yeah, and that Dragon will go down very quickly. Can they get anything out of it? Watch out, GG. Needs to be careful. He doesn't get caught. Rumble actually blowing his ulti there on towards uh, Big Fat and Chaos. They're going to back away from this one. And Kenny just going to go retreat to the safety of the tower. Yeah, and France are not ready for that fight just yet. Soaz needs to be careful. He doesn't get caught out. He has been separated from his team. Twisted Fate going to port up there. Does get the stun guard down. Soaz is going to get exploded here. We'll try and get away. Kuja comes around. Beautiful Perfect crescendo. Ball. And the wall to say, get off my top lane. Kuja actually taking a, a spear just at the end there as well. But France are going to retreat here. Canada might be able to pick up this turret here. I'm not too sure whether France are going to be able to get round in time because they have that long-range poke. That, and, of course, the, the, the damage coming out from Chaos, Big Fat LP, and Hotshot. Yeah, they're just going to back away from this one. That is the top lane actually going down to minions as well, which is never the best thing. And uh, they have come around. They do try and manage to poke down Chaos there. That wall not quite working. I think he wanted to try and put it across to uh, block his escape, but France have managed to protect the turret. But... Uh, Still very, very even between these teams. The gold, of course, still in favour of Canada, despite the fact it's 10-5 up, 4-2 in towers. And really, it's just all a bit... Just the early lane phase is, is kind of working in the favour of Canada. I, I just feel they're slowly, slowly starting to win these team fights. They're slowly ticking away towers, but until they can get an inhibitor, I have to give the edge to France. Because even though France is behind on gold right now, their presence in team fights is actually a lot higher. Just because Anivia and Rumble do so much front-loaded damage, and everyone on COG is so squishy. Yeah. And if, of course, if, if, if Twisted Fate or Chaos do get caught out, even, even Elements in there as well, they will go down very quick. So, uh, Hotshot seems to have some random line across his name. I don't know what it is. I've just I've noticed it a few times in the graphic. I'm trying to keep our eye on that one. Remember, Canada are 1-0 up. They win the first game. There's some big cheers going out. So I'm just wondering what the other final is at the moment over on the main stage. It is StarCraft 2, of course. What else, what else would it be with the big big roars? Remember, League of Legends, uh, the grand final will be following over on the main stage after this match. This is a best of three. The uh, final will be a best of three, but unfortunately, I believe they've already played one match. I, I think they have, yes, and we don't know the result of that no, yet. No, we don't know the result. We're tucked away in the corner right now. Ho hopefully, so. someone will come and tell us, or you guys at home, we, we've got no way of communicating with you whatsoever, so we'll never find out until we actually walk away from this game. So, as it stands, it is 10-5. Let's have a quick look at the items. We talked about, obviously, uh, the Hextech Gunblade and the Rylers on uh, Rumble. On Anivia, he's just building up that Ravenous Death Cap. You can see he's got the Rod of Ages already complete. Urgot actually completed the uh, Frozen Heart there with the Man Immune and the Iron Immune Boots. Uh, looking towards Chaos. Chaos with a uh, Quicksilver Sash now. That's what he blew earlier. I right. incorrectly called it a cleanse. It was the Quicksilver Sash which he used earlier on. I was looking at it. I was kind of confused. I was looking at it. I was like, where's the cleanse timer? I was like, hey, <laughs> there's only one. What's going on? It was the Quicksilver Sash, of course, that he did go there. That will be the top turret going down. 4-3 at the moment. Wow, StarCraft's getting loud Very in here. Loud. Yeah, and that, that's coming from the main stage at the other end of the hall. I don't know whether you guys pick it up on the microphone. I don't Absolutely. think I can hear it come through here, but obviously we've only used one headphone. We've got a bit of a, a, bit of a blast from both ears. Rabadon's death cap is completed by um, both Nidalee and Twisted Fate. So Hotshot GG and Big Fat GG. So Nidalee's... Uh, Spears are going to start really hurting now. So that's going to be around about 400 AP, I think that is, between those two. And France now going to be taking down this second inner turret Hot here. Shot. They don't have anyone with teleport yeah. on France. And they are I don't know what they're going to do. They need to send something back for Hotshot. 
or they need to force a dive and get this game. They're going for the dive. They're going to go dive in here. They go straight towards KX. KX again taken down very low. Did manage to cleanse again. Out. Crescendo across Amazing the entire Canada team. Beautiful crescendo there. And the odd one's going to get away back on towards the fountain. They need to concentrate on that turret. Getting the inhibitor. The turret has gone Even down. Even then, just going to trade in hips here. And after Hotshot gets that in here, he's going to come back. There goes Yellow Star. He's already porting back. That's going to be the inhibitor being picked up there. But the Hotshot's going to get this inhibitor down actually before France do. And that is a really good trade there. Despite the fact they picked up a couple of kills, but Hotshot GG is continuing to push on. He's like, you know what, the French team are here. I'm not worried about Yellow Star too much. Now he's going to back away and say thank you very much. So, not bad play, really, but an absolute fantastic crescendo in there. Really, really great Sona Alt. They were extremely close to being able to finish off uh, Soraka and Trundle in that fight, and if they could have, it would have been over. They would have won the game right there. Very uh, quick decision-making by France, because if they would have hesitated there, they would have either lost that inhibitor or, you know, lost the team fight. It was, it was a good call to go in immediately. COG really forced their hand with that hotshot pushing top. And it was Linux that flashed in there. Of course, there's been talk of uh, no harmony in the Team France, but they certainly seem to be pulling it together in this one. As it stands, the BF Sword now actually has been picked up by Ergot, so obviously picking up some kills in there. Actually, it's all, all the about the assists. Hudir picking up the kills. The kills actually spread across, and Sona picking up a kill is never the greatest thing in the world. But you know what? He's got that Shirelia's Reverie built up there. We're looking towards the two junglers, of course. Trundle was miles ahead, and uh, Chaos blowing his ulti there just to try and chip down. Up. So has his health there, but immediately you can see it gets built straight up by uh, Kuja's heal there. So we're going to set up. I think we're going to be possibly seeing a... Uh, a definite either a bait round the Baron fight or not. No, if, if Canada, Canada can manage to turtle in their base tower, Hotshot still has teleport up, so if they can make them dive again, it should be interesting. And they just burn rubble out for not much, they're gonna be able to reheal that. Not sure what France has planned here. Well of course the only lane that is pushed is that uh, that that bottom lane for Canada. So they could follow in the super minions possibly, but the top and the uh, mid both completely pushed. Of course they're gonna be super minions stacking on the top and bottom. So we'll keep our eyes on that. But France are looking like they want to engage here. And but in my opinion right now, France can't engage because CLG's going, since CLG's in their base, they're going to be able to stop the super minions from killing their base towers. But if France has pushed up that far, they can't they do it with theirs. With well. So they have to have a person in their base. It's a really awkward situation when you trade in Hibs like that because both teams are sort of tethered to their base towers in one way or another. And Canada going for a Baron push here? They should because... Because they see a Nivea over yeah. there, and that's we'll see it. What they, here. they know that it's a four v five. The Trundle Shred does kill it fairly quickly. Yeah, and Canada will go in for this one. They're going to ward it up. There's actually no wards at all there either from France, but I think they're going to be pretty aware that they have gone towards it. Linux now coming over for a look, but Canada could have pulled that one. You know, I think they could have pulled it and done it. That was just time, not enough information. They didn't realize that Urgot and Sona were both there. The only person they saw on the map was a Nivea, so even then it would have been a four v five, and that's not something they wanted to do. Yeah. it's benefit of hindsight that we do get with this spec mode. We can catch it. Oh, Linux been caught out here. Might be able to get taken down. It's going to be the Chaos knife coming in, but meanwhile, Chaos oh. has got Soaz all over Jumping. him. He's going to have to cleanse across. Oh, he just Good popped flash. the ulti the other side. Now Soaz is in trouble. They're going to come around for him. Big for LP actually portaling away from this one. Does manage to bust away and unfortunately leaves the odd one all on his Todd and <laughs> completely he pulls away from that one. Yeah, right there yeah you're dead, fight. son. I'm off. <laughs> I'm out of here. And uh, the odd one won't be thanking him for that one. So France, despite actually almost being in a precarious situation, now have a complete push. Are they the going to try to tank it? Rumble won that fight, because without Chaos, Canada uh, has no team fight presence. And the minions are coming in, so they're going to push on. They will get this turret down. Hotshot GG, oh, just getting a spear across the towards Soaz there. Managing to take the damage down on him, but that's going to be a second inhibitor now for France. So France looking like taking this one to a second game. It is far from over yet, though, because this poke team, you know, and this is always the dangerous situation when you do get a push like that because you're effectively giving the opposition free farm. You have to follow up on it. We do have the uh, Lich Bane now completed on uh, Twisted Fate as well. But Twisted Fate, like you mentioned, they're so Still squishy. Hasn't gotten a kill. But, but so has getting around the back of Chaos was a brilliant play. I mean, if Absolutely. he hadn't have done that, they would have easily picked off Linak and maybe picked off a few others that came in there. France wisely are going to back away from this one. They're going to buy 813 now on Soaz. So, uh, as much as we talk about his build, it seems to be working He's better crushing, and better. Man. Yeah, <laughs> He's managed to somehow get through the poke team and close in. Because, like I said earlier, if you can brawl with Rumble, the Gunblade can actually work. I just didn't see a way he would be able to do it against the poke comp, but he's managed to do it. He's managed to get onto Chaos in multiple situations. 
So the odd one has This is the desperation the play right now. Yeah, I know. You can see there's a ward right there, so France know exactly what's happening. Linak is going to come around, and they're like, well, it's only the odd one. He's going to flash in, and the pillar of filth comes across the rumble. Ulti, that's going to slow him down. I think he might be able to get away from this one, but I'm not too sure where he's going to go, and whether it's actually going to this delay. This works very well, because Nidalee and Tristan Peter are going yeah. for those towers. They're going to push across. They're going to try and push Otto their way in. doing a really good job of staying alive here. And he's just baiting them around. They're completely unaware of this. Now they're going to see it. Now the, yeah, the pinks go down now. And, and the odd, they have to get off Baron. They have to respond alive. to this. The odd one is still alive. That's going to be the, another inhibitor going down And he's going to live because everyone has to respond to their base push. The only person that's gone back is Sona. Oh, there's Ergot. Now he's going to come across. And we are going to have to see them defending this one. And that's going to be a lot of damage. Although that middle Nexus turret will gen regenerate all those somewhat fairly. So, uh, you know, he didn't die. And he's back... <laughs> He's back at the yeah, Baron. Back at what a bait. And now the rest of Canada are coming in there because Big Fat Help are using that, uh, that ulti to teleport. put in. <laughs> Very well Gibraltar. played. And now they're going to get Baron. And Linak is going to come in. Can he go and flash and get the steal in? Will he try to? He will certainly go in there. Will he get the stun down? He, oh, got, he got the steal! He got, he got the steal! Superb play from France. So as now comes in. Oh, they're going to get straight across. The ulti comes across. Crescendo comes across. That's when Titus using his ulti. I'm not too sure if he needed to do that. But he's going to go on to Big Fat LP. Actually not getting the kills yet at the moment. They will manage to go on to Chaos. Surely Chaos is the one they want. They're completely poke control here though. And the Hotshot GG is going to go on a spear back across. Big Fat LP. If they LP, keep chasing, they might be able to get it because Trondo used his last bit of mana on that last pillar and they are going to back away but really very well played by Linux. Take him off the team. I think Yellowstar might be able to catch a stun on someone here. Is he going to come across the cameras? Banned away. He will catch the stun on the odd one. He will go down. Yellowstar does pick up the kill. Flash use there. I just caught a glimpse of it there. As Soas continues to chase, inhibitor will go down. Soas finishing that one off. Meanwhile, we've also got super minions coming up the mid here. This could be end game here for France here. They have that Baron buff. It's almost certainly going to be the turret where they've cut Canada. Oh, beautiful. That's the big wall across. They're actually going to back away from this one, though. It is uh, still a four on four but they, they chose to not follow it up down in, in top lane and now since they've cleared the two inhibitors it looks like they're just going to push yeah, right down is going to have to clear out those super minions in base as well remember he's uh, back up there he has respawned but very well played by Linak in a five on one situation with really the, I was amazed Big Fail he didn't time his stun card there just to go just to take him out of it to spike the just no you can oh because he got you can still probably spike top through stuns right the only thing that would stop smite is uh, suppression I think so, very well timed, basically. It was well timed, and one thing, what is with Smite does so much true damage that if both junglers are there with Smite, even regardless if your entire team is there, it's still extremely risky, because I'd say they have at least a 40% chance of stealing if he's there. A rumble on, catching on towards Kayak there. He's got uh, two below him, actually. I'm not too sure if they realize that Ergot's coming along that lane. Yes, he will do. They're going to wisely back away from that turret. Big fat LP with the uh, the glow around him, which tells me he's got a couple of pots running. Of course, we can't, think. We can't see what they have to buy in. We have got Phantom Dancer and KX as well now. And uh, I tell you what, if Rumble gets that Ravenous death cap, he's going to really, really hurt. I think we really saw how weak COG is in team fights there. They killed Uda before the fight started. Anivia's ult was in uh, sort of an off position and missed everyone. And they were still able to force COG to their base and take an inhibitor. They were extremely superior in team fights. And so has his life gen obviously coming from that hex deck and blade. And uh, Hotshot was trying to do it once again at the top lane, but this time Linak has cut him off. So France are going to back away once again. Remember, look at that big stack of super minions going in the mid Rumble there. Rumble wants to, to go brawl Hotshot right now. If he can catch him, he's going to kill him. Um, look, hopefully the camera will pan across. We do catch a glimpse of him. Will he manage to catch his tether on him? No. no completely missed. And Hotshot still had flash that entire time, so yeah. it's probably not going to happen. Meanwhile, Yellowstar continues to keep control. Remember, it is Super Minions coming on the bottom here. The uh, inhibitor of uh, France will be respawning shortly. I'm hoping this game doesn't they go on too long. They can't because, stay here uh, too long because Anivia has no blue buff. Because that, that final stage final game is, is due to start in half an hour. So I might be leaving you two guys and you'll go like, no, we want to watch the final. Screw you. Pretty much. <laughs> but... Uh, We'll see how it goes. They'll probably be delayed on the main stage. They generally do get it. I can't hear any roaring at the moment, though, which tells me StarCraft may have finished, actually, already. Um, we are tucked away in her uh, hood. I think we've been calling it all weekend. It pretty much is. There's, there's no way around it. We're penned off. So here we go. France going to be pushing on towards the final turret. And uh, Linak also pushing down super minions in the mid there, so he's going to really keep the pressure on. You can see the inhibitor has respawned in the mid there, so France are going to try and do the split push. 
And Linux, you know, we talked about him earlier on. He's been able to catch that build. He's, I feel he's like they're going to back away and get a Nivea blue buff because they can't really do anything with extended poke team fights without having a blue buff on a Nivea. And unfortunately for them, they've not made a great deal of use of that Baron buff, which they did steal, other than getting those few kills early on. They are going to get this turret down, though. It's got absolutely nothing. This is the this is the difference of not having that awesome rage AD. They are going to go straight in there. Yellowstar almost taken down as well. Hotshot GG flashed away. For some reason, we focus on him. God knows why the cameraman loves him. Chaos is going to get picked off here. They're going to go towards Tinas there. They will turn around. They're actually pretty split fights here, and I think Canada is going to work in their favour with this split fight. They will take down Linux there, and now the rest of France are going to try and back away from this one. Right, Kuchip turns around, puts Crescendo straight across him and says, yeah, we're off now. See you, son. So, despite that all-close fight, it was only one each apiece. And France were split pretty heavily there, and I felt that was starting to split too heavily, qu yeah. quickly they turn engaged in there. before the tower was quite dead, so it, just, it was a sloppy engage. They had no way of closing on to Chow X, who basically just auto-attacked Uter a bunch of times and killed him. You're trolling him with that name there. Chow X. Chow X, that's what you call him. That's whatever he calls him outside of it. Yeah, it is Chaos. <laughs> True. <laughs> but uh, how are Canada going to respond to this one? I'm not too sure. They are all towers down on their base. They have two inhibitors, but they are open to the elements. It's interesting. They have enough kite to... Uh, what, with the blue buff, I feel like France is going to be able to just walk up and take inhibitors. And then if you can see at the moment picking up that blue buff. Oh, so has trying to get on towards Big Fight LP. That would have been curtains for him. If it had gone down, that is the blue buff now for Nivea. You can see him closing straight up on that, opening him. It's uh, in the middle elements. You're not going to be able to do anything about that one, son. And stun card is on Twisted Fate, but uh, it's not going to have a chance to use it. And they're like, come on, Lydia. Get, get yourself in gear here. You are slacking well behind. The rest of uh, France ready and waiting to go in there. Oh, that's a big spear, though, yellow oh start. That is really starting to hurt on him, isn't it? That was a full full range, I think, that Void uh, staff also actually picked up by uh, Twisted Fate in there. So they really need to dodge that poke as best they can. Which is kind of hard when there's there's traps everywhere there's as well. There's so much of it. Right. Here we go. Canada's gonna... still very afraid of France. And it's, it's Linux. It's been flat, flash uh, stunning, actually. This, this started most of these fights. And again, they're backing away from it. France... They need to... Oh, they're going to catch out Hotshot GG here. They're going to go for him. I'm not too sure he's the right one to go for. He just managed to get the Urgot stun. That will be Hotshot down. Surely now France are going to push on here. Avoid those traps if they can. They're getting on towards Elements. Elements is going to certainly get taken down. Shot with the Gunblade from Soaz. Pillar of Filth. Beautiful splat bang in the middle of France there. That actually caught the whole team out off guard there. I don't think they were ready for that one. Yellowstar does get caught out with a little bit of a poke there. But they will take this inhibitor down. The top inhibitor now has super minions on it as well. Just meanwhile, and you can see Lenak split off down the bottom there to take down that bottom inhibitor. They're going to catch on towards the old one. He's probably going to walk away from this one, or will he not? Because the Urgot slow managed to finally catch him down. This will Man, surely be GG. They're not protecting him, so he's going to fall here. Yeah, of, oh, Titus also goes down as well. So as follows. Twisted Fate kill. picks up a triple kill in seconds there. Meanwhile, Lenak's like, what's going on, guys? <laughs> Down the bottom, taking and this actually, hit. this is really poor timing because Baron just spawned, and those death timers are super long. And they, the pings there, they, they want to close down Linux there. Actually, K I think KX wanted a piece of him. You can see Twisted Fate was porting. Yes, he has. He's used his uh, his ulti to get in there. And I think Linux is gonna. He's actually sat porting, and now there, yeah, they, they go see the see the ulti finishes, but. I'm not too sure whether Canada are going to go for this Baron. Oh, there has Hotshot ported, actually teleported up there on towards the inhibitor. Very nicely done. That's going to cause a wave. Unfortunately, there, a whole of Team France have re managed to respawn there. I was going to try and get a, a glimpse in from Skyro. Now we've had to go back to chat. <laughs> that was like a trade of, trade of microphones there. But uh, they are going in for the Baron. I'm not too sure if they're in the position to get it. They, can they get do it. have five the members. The damage that Twisted Fate and, and Caitlyn do, especially when Hotshot comes over here with Spears, I feel like they can get it. But wow, Kev's taking a lot of damage. <laughs> Nope, they had to back off. Yeah, they cannot do it. Remember, we have all gone on for 45 minutes. That Baron builds up stronger and stronger with the hit points uh, as it goes on. They have kept it going, though. 
And Hotshot GG is going to try and finish it off. Big Fat LP will come in to try and finish it off. France still absolutely completely in the way. They've got that ward at the back there, but they're nowhere near. Then it's going to flash in. in. He has oh done it again. God. I cannot believe it. Linak has flashed in for the second time running and managed to spite it and completely caught Canada off. I didn't see, did he off. place that ward before his flash or did he flash in blind? Oh my god, no, no, the ward was down, the ward was down already, they had full vision of it, but what a great flash again, Lilac coming in, stealing that Baron away, and of course the difference was the odd one wasn't there, so they had no smite to be able to finish it off there, and now Canada coming in against a fully Huge barroned up French Canada team. There. We do have, uh, is the blue buff still on bar? I don't think it really matters at this stage. There's no uh, wards there. Anyway, no, no towers to stop them. And that will be the final inhibitor going down. Just the one Nexus turret. They just need to force this fight at the right opportunity. And to be honest, I think they can force it on the turret as well. Oh, Chaos getting burst down there, but Yellow Stars getting picked off. Chaos needs to be careful. Crescendo actually used. That's a little bit too early, I think, for Crescendo. Continue on Kuja. Kuja just had to flash away from that one. Linak was not in the fight. He's been initiating every time they needed him there. Now he's going to come in. Are we going to get... Can't have a flash, and of course, that's why they've initiated the last few fights, because he's just used the flash to take the Baron down, which is why France is having so many issues actually getting past this wave of Pope. So. That was actually a very impressive hold by CLG there. The uh, Yellow Star basically got himself caught out of position and everyone else had to kind of dive in front of him just to save him and that's why they took so much damage. Well, they've just got no initiate now because outside of Linux Flash stunning, nobody is doing anything. Oh, they've caught Soaz out here. He turns around. That, was a, that seemed a pretty random tether there, actually. What France needs to do here is they need to shop everyone by elixirs and they need to push as three waves of super creeps arrive at the tower. Then the damage that the creeps add, no matter what happens in the fight, will be enough to kill the tower and the, and the inhibitor. But it seems like they're they're gonna rush it a little bit. They have enough time on Baron and on their super creeps that they could wait for everyone to buy elixirs, but they're not gonna do that. I feel like everyone should chop and get the added bonus elixirs, but we'll see what happens here with the, when the three waves arrive at the same time. There they go, that bottom wave is slowly coming. It is super minions coming on the bottom against super minions, so that's gonna be a little bit slower. But the two top lanes you can see, top and mid, coming in and we're just looking towards the timers actually so crescendo is back up now on sona as well as rumbo's ulti flash not quite up three quarters of the way done yet and uh i'm keeping my eye on that teleport as well from Hotshot. gg oh hot shot got stunned out there but the rest of the team weren't quite ready for it Lino managed to get in oh he's got him a second go. time and this time he is going to get poked down but it's not quite going to be enough crescendo goes across on towards elements the camera's panned down meanwhile on towards soas soas getting picked off there titus is also going to follow i don't think he's going to be able to survive this one the rest of the team are not anywhere near kuja will come down try and poke that little bit of heal but that would be caught out very well They're here by rushing. canada as you can see the super creeps are almost, oh, are almost winning the game for them if they would have waited for three waves they still might be able to take down this and linak now on the nexus i'm not too sure it's going to be enough the super minions will come in they will take them down you can see Sonner actually picking up the kill Kuja will take down. Will the Super Minions be enough to take down this final Nexus turret? It will be. And Lina goes down almost certainly, but no. That is going to be the win and a very close game, as we said. That is game. a full poke team versus a, a pretty tanky team. And really, without that flash initiate from Linux, they didn't seem to have a lot to no do with it. They starting fights. didn't realize how much they were relying.